Okay, this video is, does alcohol cause diabetes? And the short answer is yes. Di alcohol significantly increases your risk of type 2 diabetes. I'm going to show you a couple of interesting things about it, though. So first of all, here is uh, the course of diabetes in terms of fat. This is sort of the ectopic fat theory of Gerald Sheldman. It's also sort of a staging system that I sort of, you know, made up to some extent, too, by just reading about diabetes. So basically, you accumulate fat first in your skeletal muscle. Intramyocellular lipid, fat in the skeletal muscle, that is the first spot detectable for insulin resistance. And that was confirmed by Dr. Gerald Shulman in his lab out at Yale. Okay, and so it causes insulin resistance by the concept of overnutrition. Basically, it overwhelms the inner mitochondrial membrane with electron carriers and electron transport reverses. And that has a whole bunch of uh, backlog problems to Krebs cycle and to glycolysis. And this will give you postprandial after you eat uh, hyperglycemia, high blood glucose. Then the fat accumulates in the liver, you get fatty liver, and then the liver can't accurately sense uh, blood glucose levels during fasting, and, you, and it starts releasing too much glucose into the blood through, let's say, gluconeogenesis, breakdown of glycogen, so you get fasting hyperglycemia, high blood sugar even when you're fasting. Okay, then you start accumulating fat in the pancreas, and excess accumulation of fat in the pancreas leads to uh, destruction of the pancreas beta cells, and you'll see this on a CAT scan. You'll see fatty replacement, for example, in the head of the pancreas, fatty atrophy of the pancreas. And then that's when it starts becoming irreversible. And you no longer can um, just compensate by producing more insulin. You now have to give, as a medication, insulin. They become insulin dependent. And these are just some of the side effects. Okay, I'm going to talk about alcohol. The focus of this talk is alcohol, but I'm just giving the backstory for people who are less familiar with diabetes. It'll be pretty fast. Okay, so alcohol, drinking alcohol causes fatty liver. Okay. Excessive dietary fat causes fatty liver. Excessive high fructose corn syrup causes fatty liver. Okay, Robert Lustig. I know Robert Lustig exaggerates some things and he promotes meat. I know all that. But he still said something kind of clever and funny about fructose being a little bit like alcohol without the buzz. And there's truth in that. And I talked about that in my recent fructose lecture. Okay, so anyways, normal liver right here. And then here's NAFL, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But in our case, it's going to be alcoholic liver disease. You sometimes see it written as ASH, alcoholic steato. Oh, hepatitis for NASH. Here's non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. This would be AFL, alcoholic fatty liver. And that can produce scarring, the inflammation, and then lead to cirrhosis. Cirrhosis can lead to hypoxia and cancer of the liver. Okay, but fatty liver is what we're going to focus on here. You know, how does the fat cause uh, diabetes, insulin resistance? One unique thing about it is the fat is able to travel by a flip-flop maneuver into the skeletal muscle cells. So even if you block all the transporters, the fat still gets into the skeletal muscle. So the only thing you can do is reduce your dietary intake of fat. And it's especially the saturated fat that's the most prone to doing this. It intercalates itself into the outer leaflet of the plasma membrane, and then it flip-flops to the inner leaflet, then it enters the cytoplasm and goes into mitochondria, overwhelms the mitochondria, producing too many electron carriers. You get more electron carriers produced from um, saturated fat than you do for the unsaturated fats because they're already part oxidized. Okay, but that's important to know because what's the most important thing for causing um, insulin resistance, which means causing diabetes, is excessive dietary fat, especially sat fat. That's important to know. So if you had type 2 diabetes, the smart thing would be to reduce your dietary fat intake. And it's going to cause reversible electron transport here along the inner mitochondrial membrane. Basically, you pump too many electrons into the intramembranous space in here, and that's going to cause the gradient to go too high, and then the proton pumps aren't going to work, and electron transport will start to reverse direction. When electron transport of the inner mitochondrial membrane reverses direction, it'll start dropping electrons down into oxygen that's sitting in the mitochondrial matrix. And then the oxygen will be converted into superoxide, which is a free radical, has an unpaired electron in its outer orbital. It's a negative charge. It's anion. Okay. This can damage the DNA in the mitochondria. It can also actually lead to damage of the DNA in the nucleus. And that will activate a DNA re repair enzyme called PARP, P-A-R-R-P. -R -R this is an abbreviation for it, but just know PARP. You're going to need to know PARP. Okay. Uh, PARP can then travel to the cytoplasm and inhibit glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. I show you this guy here because uh, this guy is a super genius, Michael Brownlee. He had type 2 diabetes himself and, you know, he actually had type 1 diabetes, you know, and he's afraid he's going to die for it, rightfully so. And so basically he started to study diabetes, devoted his life to it, you know, because it was to save his own life and man, is this guy a genius. Like I can tell you, his paper 
called The Unifying Theory of Diabetic Complications. It was published in 2004. It's the best paper ever written on diabetes. It's one of the best medical papers ever written in any field. I told you, when I started reading this paper, I almost wanted to cry. It's so beautiful. Uh, I noticed this guy will never get a Nobel Prize because they don't want the public to know about this. Okay. Um, so excessive dietary fat, especially sad fat, causes reversal of electron transport. You can get the article for free at, um, I think it's American Diabetes Association. I'll show you. At PubMed, you can, there's no abstract. You can't really see the paper. Um, so anyways, th that's an, a, a little illustration from the journal article. Here's the paper. And again, if you go to the American Diabetic Association uh, webpage, I think it's, it's uh, journals.org of the ADA site, American Diabetic Association, you will get the entire paper. Uh, Pathobiology of Diabetic Complications, a Unifying Mechanism. It was published in writing June 1, 2005. He won the Banting Award as the greatest diabetes researcher in the entire world. And trust me, if you care about diabetes, you really ought to read that paper. You'll be amazed at how incredible it is. You'll just go, wow. Okay, um, so PARP actually gets involved with glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. And um, when it inhibits this enzyme, then you start running side reactions off its, uh, its reactant, its substrate, which is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And you will activate protein kinase C pathway, which causes all kinds of problems. But for our purposes, we care at the moment about MGO, methyl glyoxyl. Methyl glyoxyl will then lead to the formation of advanced glycation end products um, inside the cell and outside the cell. So here's a little more detailed picture showing PARP inhibiting glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. And then the substrate, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, runs a side reaction to become MGO, methyl glyoxyl. That'll travel to the extracellular matrix, do damage. It'll glycate things inside the cell. It'll glycate albumin. Um, it'll activate receptors for advanced glycation end products in other cells, rage receptors. Uh, but So you need to know this, that glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase inhibition is a major component of insulin resistance and diabetes complications. Major component. Okay, that's going to be a big deal with regard, with regard to alcohol because alcohol is going to inhibit the same enzyme. So this was, uh, this is now we're going to talk about metabolism of alcohol and we're going to connect it to diabetes. So alcohol, when it comes into the liver cell, it first goes in the cytoplasm. It's metabolized by this enzyme, ADH, alcohol dehydrogenase. When you hear dehydrogenase, think NADH. So the cofactor for this reaction, NAD plus, is converted to NADH. All right, then you got ethanol, the aldehyde, the sneed aldehyde. And um, it undergoes reaction through acetaldehyde dehydrogenase. ALDH is the enzyme. And that converts it to ethanoic acid, a carboxylic acid, acetic acid, which is a relatively harmless substance. But the important point for our purposes is that you, again, produce another NADH. So you produce an NADH here in the first reaction, NADH in the second reaction. By the way, a deficiency of this enzyme, ALDH, is relatively common in Asian persons and gives them like a flushing syndrome when they drink alcohol. Um, that's also relevant for causing dementia by uh, omega-6 cooking oils. They're at increased risk, especially if they have it. You're still at increased risk for omega-6 cooking oils anyways, but especially if you're deficient in this enzyme. Okay, so anyways, now because you're producing NADH here from the first reaction of alcohol, NADH here from the second reaction of alcohol, you're going to accumulate lots of NADH in your liver cells. And then this NADH is going to start inhibiting other reactions. Um, I, put I put ACDC, you're on the highway to hell with this alcohol. That's one of their most famous rock and roll albums. Uh, it's bad. I'll show you what's interesting about it with regard to diabetes is um, when you get this increased NADH, it will then uh, cause, you're, you're not going to be able to run glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, so it will back up. And when it backs up, you can produce methyl glyoxyl, okay, and lead to AGs. The same reaction as you get with diabetes, okay. Plus, we know that alcohol causes fatty liver. And basically, fatty liver is like prediabetes, diabetes of the liver. Okay, so there's two ways that alcohol causes uh, diabetes, by blocking this enzyme, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. So it causes uh, similar overlapping complications that diabetes does, and by causing fatty liver, like diabetes of the liver. Okay. And then the next thing is... Um, it also causes uh, damage to the hypothalamus, and it will impair the hypothalamic control of insulin. So here's this paper here. Binge drinking increases risk of type 2 diabetes. Uh, even after blood alcohol concentrations had become undetectable, there was insulin resistance for up to 54 hours. So that's over two days after the last dose of ethanol. 
chiefly as a result of impaired hepatic and adipose tissue insulin action. And there was impaired insulin action on the hypothalamus. Um, and let's see what else. So here's a summary. In summary, ethanol impairs glucose and lipid metabolism in rats through neurotoxic effects on the hypothalamus. Uh, the resulting insulin resistance persists for days after ethanol has been metabolized. So there's not only is alcohol an epidemiological risk factor, but it's also a direct cause of insulin resistance that sets the stage for metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. So alcohol is really bad. All that stuff about two drinks a day being good for you, that's nonsense. That was based on something called the survivor effect, and they distorted the setup for the experiments to show that. It's actually not. It's actually atherogenic as well. So anyways, I just show you this. And, you know, one of these experiments, this one was done in rodents, but there's plenty of reasons, as I'm showing here. I don't know yet if this has been proven in humans, but this is a 2013 paper. Uh, but the point is made. Alcohol does a whole bunch of things that are the same as diabetes, and it contributes to insulin resistance. And the smart move is don't drink any alcohol at all. But I, I thought that was funny how it cranks up any age, it messes up the hypothalamus, and it's terrible for brains. I mean, alcohol pickles the brain. It makes the brain shrink. The person gets an atrophic, shrunken brain. You show me a 40-year-old alcoholic, their brain will look like an 80-year-old. So anyways, um, I thought that was a little bit interesting. I think that's my last, last slide on this one. Let's see here. Yep. Okay, I hope you found that interesting.